What's up you guys? Today we're going to talk about a powerhouse plugin for creative effects. If you want to be able to control any knob within FL Studio in multiple different ways, you're in the right place. And it's free. So let's talk about the surprisingly powerful Fruity Peak controller. Let's get started. So getting in our mixer here, we'll see that the Fruity Peak controller has an LFO option as well as a peak option. And these options that are available will actually control and modulate any other knobs. So if I were to turn up this volume here, we would see that we get an LFO. And let's apply that to some synths and see what happens. So we've got two synths here. And let's hook these up to the Fruity P controller. First, we'll go ahead and we will get into our link to controller settings here. And we will choose the basic LFO option because the first thing we're going to get into is using the LFO. I'm going to invert one of these and link the other to the same thing. However, I'm going to leave this one going the regular direction. When we invert, we do so by dropping down our formula here, which gives us a lot of cool options that we can talk about here in a second. And if you're going to link two of these like this, you'll want to make sure remove conflicts is off. Because if it's on and I click accept, you'll see this knob over here will stop because it was conflicting. Now with that done, let's give this a listen. We now have those pads dancing around our head left to right, if you listen closely. Now, what's cool about the Peak Controller and where it actually gets its name, it's not just an LFO, but it also controls using the volume envelope of any sound that you run through it. So with our Peak Controller on Insert 1, if we run our synth here that I just added to Insert 1, and we come to the Peak Controller, we will see movement. Right? And this movement can actually be used to control things. If we go back to a linked controller option, we can choose peak. Now that we've chosen that, let's see what happens. And we achieve this effect with a simple control that moves a filter on our parametric EQ. And if we watch both together, And the great thing about this is we can actually change the way it acts by changing our options here. I can raise the base point of where it starts, which opens this up. Drop that. I can increase the volume. And I can even change the tension. I want to keep this less exaggerated or more exaggerated. We even have a decay option. We also have a phase option, which will shift the phase one way or the other, basically meaning that the LFO is still going to go at the same time, but the starting point of the wave is going to be different. We have our shapes as well as a random, which can be great for creative effects. Now, with another peak controller on another insert, we can look at the volume envelope of a kick and we can actually use that with the peak controller for some cool side chaining effects. And on our synth insert here, we'll go ahead and add a fruity compressor. Now what we'll do is we'll link our threshold to the peak of our peak controller for kick. And we will do that inverted, so every time the kick hits, the threshold turns down. Now if we click play, we'll see movement. Now with that said, if we start increasing our ratio, We 
you'll get a pumping side chaining effect. Now, the really interesting and creative part of this comes when you choose the final part of the peak controller's options for controlling. So adding a lead piano and a fruity filter, I can go ahead and add interesting automation with both the LFO and the peak controlling at one time. Now I've got this filter set where I want it. So I'm gonna link the cutoff frequency in my fruity filter, and I'm going to actually link it to the base because the base one is where our LFO is, and we will do peak plus LFO. Now because the LFO is full range and will go all the way back and forth across here, I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to go two times smaller increment. Now if we'll notice here, our filter is actually only going about halfway up. So what we can actually do is we can come in here and five is half. So if we plus 0 0.5, you'll notice that that actually starts us at the center and will put us to the top. So then theoretically we should start here and go to the top. But if we want to actually go in the middle, that we can do so by going half of that with a 0.25. And if you'll notice every single time that one of those bases hit, this jumps up and opens up the piano. Now I think it'd be a better aesthetic to take this and to invert it. If you'll notice when we click this inverted, it just adds a one minus at the beginning of this. And you'll see we're slammed to the ceiling, but that is because we're adding instead of taking away to drop this down. And now we have the same thing, but inverted. And now that we have all that set up, our final product with all of its movement being managed by peak controllers is this. And that is the power of the Fruity Peak Controller. It can be used for side chaining, it can be used for creative effects, it can be used for the purpose of synthesizing and making filters move on synth sounds. It's really as far as you want to take it and it's a very great tool to use for any kind of automation and or side chaining effects you may want. So if you like this video, please like this video. If you have any comments, please comment. I always appreciate a subscribe. It's Warren with Scale Audio. Adios.